free the leopards, pro-Ukraine protesters chant in Berlin. But they won't get their wish just yet. On the other side of the country, plenty of handshakes, though no consensus. The Ukraine Defense Contact Group, whilst standing in solidarity with Kiev, fell short of committing a new batch of tanks to the battlefield. Germany denies it's universally blocking the shipment, insisting agreement was needed first amongst other nations. We are not really hesitating. We are just uh, very carefully in balance and all the pros and contras. We are not talking just about delivering anything to anybody. This is a new kind of measure we would chose, and so we have to be carefully because we, are, we have a, a, a duty to, uh, to look carefully and intensively on what might be the consequences for anybody in that conflict. The Kremlin is warning of consequences, claiming these tanks would add problems for Ukraine and the Ukrainian people. Yet those cautions won't slow down efforts by Washington to offer aid. The U.S. administration's message consistently is that it has Ukraine's back. We're going to continue to dig deep, and based upon the progress that we've made today, I'm confident that Ukraine's partners from around the globe are determined to meet this moment. The United States remains committed to leading in this coordinated effort. Rhetoric gratefully received by Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky, who in an address assured citizens that allies will continue to support his country and that Ukraine's resilience, in his words, remains strong. Still, actions speak louder than words. There remains no alternative, Zelensky says, but for the West to give Ukraine the German-made tanks before the war intensifies. Despite Friday's failure to reach a decision for now, Ukraine's troops will get a chance to train on the modern tanks in Poland, a small yet significant breakthrough in Ukraine's fight for its sovereignty. Benji Hayes, CGTN, Washington, D.C.